What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Bruce, this is what's popping and in today's video I have two brand new Harry Potter editions to my collection and they are Narcissa Malfoy and Madame Hooch. That is right guys, welcome back to the channel. Now if you've been hanging around for a little while, you will know that we have been doing some custom Funko Pops right here on What's Popping. So I went through all of those custom videos where I asked you guys to comment and let me know what your favorite figures were and what future figures you would like to see and Harry Potter came through a lot. So with Funko not having gone ahead and made these two characters yet, we decided to go ahead and make them for you so you guys can check them out, see what they look like on the turntable and also have a bit of an idea on how to do the paint apps and a few of the key things that you run through when you're making custom pops. If this is my first custom video coming across, I will leave a link to the playlist right up here that covers all of the basics on how to make Funko Pop customs, how to do head swaps, how to do body swaps, how to make sure you aren't damaging the figure and then also some key tips on how to do paint apps and that kind of thing as well. Guys, if this is your first time joining us here in What's Popping, thank you so much for tuning in and thank you to everybody for tuning in as always. If you are new here, please consider subscribing as I cover all kinds of Funko content on my channel as well as general geek culture here in South Africa. So without further ado, let's get into today's video. Right guys, so the first thing I always say when making customs is to try and keep the price as low as possible. It can be quite a tedious process if you're going through making lots of additions to figures uh, and it's very important to try and get those head and body sculpts as close as possible to the pop you're trying to make. Now in saying that, like I said guys, this can become very expensive so I went ahead for these three figures, or these two figures rather, we used three figures to create them. Now recently here in South Africa a chain store has closed down that used to stock a lot of Funko Pops and that was of course uh, Musica, if you are South African you will know all about that. Uh, so they were recently getting rid of all their stock and they had a a lot of pops for 100 rand each and then some three for the price of two so we got these three figures ridiculously cheap and we used the uh, head of Yara Greyjoy we used the body of Will the Wise I have him oh, I have him right here we have the body of Will the Wise that we used and then we also had the head and body of M from 007 so as I always say guys when you are doing customs also try and keep in mind future customs you're trying to make so the leftover bits of a pop you can reuse a bit later and you're not left with a whole lot of heads and bodies lying all over your Funko room or your, your shelf or whatever it might be which can become a little bit disturbing for some people yeah and can get some some Sid like vibes going so let's get started off with Madame Hooch because Madame Hooch was a lot of fun to make and it's the first time really that when we had made a custom we actually went ahead and added a piece to it or added a, an accessory which is something we hadn't really done before uh, so like I said we used the body of Will the Wise and then we used the head of M from 007 for this particular figure she was a lot of fun to make guys she was she was an easy paint app in terms of the body sculpt. I'm not going to show you guys how we remove the heads and that kind of thing. I've done that in all the previous videos and you guys can definitely go and check that out uh, up above in that link if you haven't seen how to do it before. Basically just using boiling water to remove that head and then going ahead and scrubbing the figure down with some cold water and a toothbrush just to remove the sheen that's on the figure and, and help with the paint application a bit. But we used uh, acrylic paint as we always do. We used dollar paints and what is most important for both of these two figures was really getting the texturing and the contrast of the paint so making sure that when we mix those paints we got exactly what we wanted out of that mixture and Madame Hooch was a very simple paint up on the body there was no paint up on the head whatsoever so that is one of the great things I always recommend with these figures is the less you need to do to them the better they're going to turn out and Madame Hooch we just went with a, a gray on her on her coat it's it, this is Madame Hooch from the uh, beginning of the Philosopher's Stone or the Sorcerer's Stone if you're over in the States and it was that scene where she came out in those black robes. The only detailing she had was a whistle around her neck. So we decided to go ahead, use the body of Will the Wise and paint that completely black or completely gray. You know, it came across quite nicely uh, as, as the, the coats uh, were sort of laid on top of each other and she came through quite well. We decided to leave her shoelaces, the original color uh, that, that Will the Wise had, which is a kind of like gray color, uh, just to give a little bit of contrast on the feet because otherwise your figure completely, you know, she would just be sort of a black blob and that, that wouldn't be fun at all. So we went ahead and did that, painted her gloves brown and then lastly went ahead for the body and gave her a bit of a necklace with her whistle that she of course uses throughout you know, coaching, coaching Quidditch and then during Quidditch matches as well as a referee. The most challenging bit with this figure which 
which you, you, you would assume is probably more difficult than it actually is, was modifying wool stick into the broom. And I thought this was going to be particularly challenging, but I did happen to have a couple of Lego broomsticks lying around. Now, if you collected Harry Potter Lego a little while ago, you will know that you got broomsticks, you got extra broomsticks and all kinds of goodies in your box of your Harry Potter Lego that you bought. So we went ahead and removed the tip of the broom from that broomstick and just using a bit of clay and a bit of molding, added it to the top of all the wiser stick. And with a nice paint app, this came out really well as a broomstick. I think that the reason it came out so well is because there is some extra detailing already on that stick that Will the Wise is holding. Sorry if it's something more than a stick, guys. I haven't watched Stranger Things, so I'm just calling it, it will stick. But uh, it came out really well as a broomstick because we had that extra detailing there. And all we had to do was cover it with brown, the same color as her gloves, and we got the full impression that this is not just a broomstick you're sweeping the house with, but actually one that you're going to be using during a Quidditch match or flying around on. So that was how we basically went about looking at this figure and uh, looking at the turntable, I think she turned out really well. I absolutely adore Madame Hooch. I can't believe Funko haven't made a figure of her already. It's an absolute sin. I, I, you know, I'm kind of shocked by that. They've made of most of the teachers. So really interesting that they haven't made her and there are different options with this. She does have a, you know, a Quidditch referee outfit that they could have used. They of course have this version that we just did with a custom that they could have used. So even a chase option that Funko could have gone with, uh, which would only have needed a different paint application. It's not even too much of a stretch for them there. But I think she came out really well, guys. The head, like I said, didn't need any work. We just we just went straight ahead and and, and pushed her head back on. Uh, something I haven't said in previous videos that is important, guys, is if you're trying to put your head back on the figure and it's not working, is to try and heat up the vinyl a little bit on whatever has the least paint. So these figures have a neck joint as well as the head. If your head has a paint job done to it, you need to try and remove that neck joint and heat that up then add the neck joints to the body and then pop the head on top of the neck joint because the head and neck joint attach really easily and they will stay together without glue. So that's something just to keep in mind as well. Um, but like I said, Madame Hooch I think came out really well. She's gonna go in my Quidditch collection with, I've got Harry riding his broom, I've got Ron as a goalkeeper and I've got Ginny with the poffle. So those are gonna go together quite nicely. I'm super excited to have Madame Hooch joining them. Now guys, the other Harry Potter figure we did is Narcissa Malfoy, and she is an underrated character in Harry Potter. I have finally started to see a bit more love for Narcissa going around Instagram, with people finally pointing out that she also saved Harry. You know, there's been a lot of posts saying that Harry was saved by mother's love twice, and that is definitely the case with Narcissa Malfoy. Now again, I'm very surprised that Funko haven't made a Narcissa Malfoy pop. She is a pivotal character when you think about the, the overall storyline. They've made a Lucius, they've made a Malfoy, it just seems natural to make a Narcissa. They've made like several different Bellatrixes, so they've gone the Death Eater and the Dark Witch route, but they haven't gone the Narcissa Malfoy route. And of course, unfortunately, uh, Helen McCrory recently passed away. Um, so this is kind of our way of, you know, remembering her and, and, and doing doing a little bit um, for our collection something to, to remember her by, because she of course did such a phenomenal job, not just in Harry Potter, but in so many different movies and a phenomenal actress and such a loss uh, at, at such a young age. Um, but guys, we went ahead and did the figure. We absolutely loved making it. Probably the easiest part about this custom was doing the hair because that hair is just so iconic and so typical Narcissa Malfoy. Uh, so that's where we started with the figure. We did, uh, as I mentioned guys, to try and uh, minimize wastage when you're using these figures is to try and do uh, keep future customs in mind. So like I said, we used the head of Yara Greyjoy. If anybody can tell me in the comments down below what they think I'm planning on using the body for, I will be incredibly impressed. So please do let me know in the comments down below what you think Yara's body would make a great custom for. I do have something in mind and it is in the works as we speak. So hopefully that will be done soon and I can share that with you on the channel as well. But we went ahead with her hair and did that classic two-toning. So we had this, uh, we used a bit of a gray for the top of her head, like a dark, dark gray, and then mixed that with a white just to get the right texture and the right color that we wanted for the bottom part of her hair, which is of course that, that's, that silvery white that you see throughout the movies. And I think that came together quite well. We then also went ahead and added a little dab of clay on each ear to give her an earring as well, just as a as a little bit of an added extra there because we felt that it just needed a little bit more detail on the head uh, to differentiate her from the Yara head a little bit more. Uh, some of the pops just fit. You, you look at it and you say, yes, that's the character. We just felt she needed some earrings as well. Uh, for the body, like I said, we used M. So we've used the whole M figure in this video, which is absolutely great. And it's 
uh, great not to have any waste. And what's great is we also have a stand for all of these figures. So uh, both of the figures that we made today came with a stand at the end of the day, which works out absolutely phenomenally. Uh, but we went ahead and made Narcissa in her green outfit. So when you're going to make these figures, you need a lot of frames of reference and a lot of different ideas. We went ahead online, found a nice picture of her in her green outfit and thought this would make a great contrast with the hair that we created and how the body would eventually turn out. So we used uh, a bit of M's, you know, the sculpt in deciding what outfit to use, but it was definitely that green that caught our eye and we thought that'll be absolutely amazing. So went ahead, uh, did a, a coat of green on there and then also got her stockings. Now her stockings, this was again a decision based on the fact that we really had stockings on M's uh, body sculpt and that her, this outfit that we chose by coincidence also had stockings. Well not by coincidence, we, we, we kind of chose it based on, on M's outfit. Um, but we just again played around with the paint there to get that right color, to get that right texturing so that we saw that, you know, you can see she's wearing stockings and it didn't just look like a flesh color coming through. And then once we had finished our initial paint tap on the body we used a toothpick to go back and add some detailing now her green outfit as you will have seen here I'll pop a picture of it somewhere on the screen has got a lot of finery a lot of embroidery a lot of filigree all over it so we wanted to try and capture as much of that as we could in the figure and ended up using a toothpick to just dot some white paint here and there on the figure and add some little uh, joins between a few of them just to give the idea of there's there's definitely a higher class to this witch she there's definitely more going on with her than just you know she didn't just walk into the mr price of diagon alley and buy the, the cheapest outfit this, this lady went to uh, madame malcolm's fine robes and and got her got her outfit so we did that, added some buttons to her front, and still just didn't feel like it was quite right. So then applied a second light coat of green over those dots that we originally had placed. And that gave the idea that these dots and, and the, the detail that we had added to her body mold was actually embedded in the in the robes she was wearing or in the garment that she was wearing. So I think that came out really nicely and you'll see when you look at it up close on the turntable that I think that is one of the high points of this figure. I love the pose. Um, that is something that's very special to me about this figure, this sort of a pose of power, which she kind of loses in the Deathly Hallows. I think the Malfoys obviously surrender a lot of power to Voldemort when he returns. and you know we see that kind of that that has a play, plays a real toll particularly in the facial expressions of lucius throughout the last two movies we see this heavy toll it's taken on the malfoy family and uh, so this is definitely a narcissa from better times from the earlier movies maybe when we didn't quite see her on screen um, but then guys we had to add the wand and once again we went back to my lego set we found some uh, extra ones they always give you extra ones when you buy Lego characters so these are great to use as, as accessories for your pops we painted it black we added that silver and what do you know the one just fits it into her hand perfectly it was like it was meant to be um, and here she is guys I think she turned out absolutely beautifully like I say I love the powerful stance that she has the way she's standing it's really like she's gonna take absolutely no nonsense and she is a proper Malfoy through and through I love what we managed to achieve with the dress like I say the the filigree and the embroidery looks like it's really embedded into the into the fabric which uh, took a bit of work to get right and a bit of trial and error but I think the end result is completely worth it and then of course the iconic two turning of the hair I think shines through and gives a great contrast to this figure in addition to her wand and those stockings where we managed to put a bit of extra detail in there as well. I think out of all the pops we've done so far, these two were the most ambitious in terms of adding accessories, which we haven't really done before on our figures. We've added a little bit here or a little bit of clay there or just a bit of extra detailing through a paint job. But this is the first time we actually either added a whole new accessory or customized the current accessory to give the character a bit more of its essence. So that for me was really exciting about the building of these two customs. And that about does it for today's video guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. If you are new, please go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Let me know what you thought about this video in the comments down below. Did you enjoy these customs and what future customs would you like to see possibly make their way across the channel? Until next time, all of the best.